Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast. Did you know? Brought to you by Mallard Bay. For all your hunting and fishing needs, want to book a hunt with an outfitter called Mallard Bay that can hook you up with anything. That's right. That's right. All right. I'm going to go Give first. Give a call. I'm going to go first today. You go right ahead. The first thing I'm going to talk about is... I oh, I hope you didn't steal mine. Okay. First thing I'm going to talk about is the Mackinac Island Bridge. Since I'm going to be going to the Mackinac Island again at the end of next month. Spelled I'm Mackinac if you're trying to... Yes. Plan your vacation. If you've never been to Mackinac Island, it's an island in Michigan. It's on Lake Michigan. It's or Lake Spirit. No, it's in Lake Lake Michigan. No, what the hell? You're the world traveler. Don't look I'm, at me. I'm I'm confused for a minute. It connects Superior. It's an know. island in Michigan. Yeah, it Oops. connects Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. I had to boy, I had to do some thinking here. I've been, I'm confused today. Anyways, it connects two of them. It's a bridge that connects the city of Saint Ig- Ignace in Michigan, and Mackinac City. It's a beautiful bridge. We've been over it a few times. That bridge was built, I'm I'm struggling today big time, was built in May of 1954. The cost of the project was $3.5 million. The cost to construct the bridge turned out to be $70 million. Just the cost to design was 3.5. The cost to build the bridge was 70 million. Two primary contractors were hired to build the bridge. More than 11,000 men worked on various aspects of building the bridge, including 3,500 at the bridge, 7,500 quarries, shops, and mills around the area, and 350 engineers. When the bridge was complete, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. It's now the fifth largest. The length of the suspension bridge is 8,614 feet. The length from Cable Bent Pier to Cable Bent Pier is 7,400 feet. Length of the main span, main span between towers is 3,800 feet. First private car to cross was in 1951. The most people that ever have crossed the bridge was in July of 2017. 609,000 vehicles crossed that month at $2 a vehicle. Whew. So it, it, it's paying for itself. There are four sure. cameras set up on the lot, on the bridge. You can watch the weather and traffic no matter where you're in the world by a Skylink. There's 609,000 that I told you was the, the record. You can now pay your bridge fare with a credit card, $2, or you can pay... It's two dollars per axle today. Micro did a special on it upstairs, downstairs. We talked to a guy when we were there, and his job was to take pictures of the bridge every year for structural. For right. much. Twice a year, he had to go up there. They paid him what eighty thousand a year? Is that a bunch of money. It's eighty thousand a year to go up and take pictures twice a year. <clears throat> because of the dangers, the Mackinac Bridge Authority closed. Occasion closes occasionally closes the bridge temporarily when the bridge is closed due to falling ice. It's a guessing game as to win or when or where it will when it will be reopened. During the longest falling, the ice closure fifteen hours was the bridge was temporarily closed. Well, that's not bad. No. It's not days like I figured it would be. Could not, be. It's a pretty interesting place. <clears throat> I recommend going to Mackinac Island. You can only get to Mackinac Island by ferry. A ferry. There's no vehicles on it. I think there was two police cars, an ambulance, and there's four fire trucks. Everything else is walking. When you get off of the ferry and you get into town, you have the aroma of fudge and horse shit because that's what it's famous for is fudge and horse-drawn carriages. So that's my first part was the Mackinac Island, just kind of a little short deal since I'm going there again. Start thinking about it. Now, this one here hurts your, hurts your heart. Uh-oh, because I okay. got one that'll hurt your heart. Do you know who Ron Wayne is? John's brother. Nope. John and Ron. Nope. I think you're wrong. If you ever had a bad day or you feel unlucky, remember... That in 1976, Ron Wayne, an Apple co-founder, made a choice that became a famous business lesson. Worried about financial risk, he sold his 10% stake in Apple for $800, (laughs) thinking it was a smart move to avoid debt. But that decision cost him big time. Guess what his his 10% would be worth today? I'm going to say $800 billion. You're off a little bit. $320 billion. Damn it. Which would make him the wealthiest man in the world. What year was it? 85? 76. 76. 
I didn't actually know that Apple was even around. Well, my thinking is, is like, to me, 800 bucks is not that much. It is in the grand scheme. In like, if, I, if I'm invested in something and I'm only going to get $800 for my investment, I don't think that's not enough to sway me to get out. I don't of something. think he was worried about the money. He was worried about them being in debt and him being owing millions potentially or whatever it was. And that was his okay. Scare. He okay. was scared okay. of having. Well, that makes sense. I'm assuming it was not an LLC, and I don't know how that works anyway. Right. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I thought I thought he was in such dire straits that 800 bucks was make or break for him. Well, I don't you know, know what, what happened. I don't. I bet his right. it said he was more worried about the debt. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. If you're on the hook, if you're 10 percent, and you got to come up with 10 percent of 10 million dollars in the hole, that's a, that's a lot of coin. So I have a buddy of mine. It's forgivable. That owned 15 percent of a ranch. Yeah. Like a 25,000 acre ranch, and they wanted to borrow 25 million against it. And he's like, no, I'm not signing my deal off because I, I can't afford to pay that back if something happens. Uh -huh. And he said, I was I was a partner on that, and so I was responsible, even though I only owned a small percentage of it. Right. So, and that's happened to people. You know, I've known people that's been in that situation before. Yeah. But my gosh, but hindsight twenty twenty, and it also is. in 1976, <laughs> computers still were not even. I mean, in 1986, they weren't really sci-fi. I mean, yep, you were kind of what it was thought of. And now we've got Elon Musk is talking about going to Mars with a, a man, a manned space capsule in ten or fifteen years or something. I read that. So day. there's an interesting guy. So he, this is not my did you know? It's kind of a bonus uh, in, in, tying into Mars. He said the actual pictures of Mars you can see water on it, but they make it look like it's this the red planet. But like he said, if you look at the actual pictures that they have of Mars, there's like a big like I can pull one up for you real quick. Probably I'm trying to remember the guy's name. He's a black gentleman. Really smart. Uh, he was. He's done several podcasts. Uh, uh, what the hell is his name? Mars photo. With Nelson DeGrasse. No, or it's another guy. Um, or Ty, what's that guy's name? Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's yeah, not Neil him. So Tyson. the guy says that that's all water. All the blue hues is water. That's it's on Mars. It's a very interesting deal. Um, but anyway, well, Elon supposedly going there. I saw a video yesterday, this little bonus deal too. And I wish I would have stayed, saved the video shows a plane and shows a space deal. Come by it. Uh -huh. It's the best video I've ever seen of a spacecraft. Huh. It comes at the cockpit. They've got like a camera in the cockpit right. and it shows this thing coming at them. A, a capsule. It looks like a saucer. It goes right above the plane hauling ass. No, could be fake. Who knows? But it was a really good video. Um, the guy also said that, if you listen to the black box of Apollo, whatever that got to the moon, uh, you can hear Neil, everybody on the plane, Neil Armstrong plane, the shuttle, um, talking about, they saw people there and they were, they, they did not think that they would mess with them. Mm. They could see them. And then, um, if you listen to the black box recording from the, the shuttle that went to the dark side of the moon, um, alien music came over, the radio waves and they they message back to now i could probably play that um they message back to houston and they're like hey we're getting this weird music do y'all hear that and they said yeah we can't really we can't really pinpoint where it's coming from audio from the dark side of the moon that's crazy boy uh da -da. let's see now i'm just gonna have to trust that i've got a good that i'm gonna pick the right video First, we're going to have to listen to, maybe this will be it. Nope, that's not it. Since they knew they would lose Stafford and John. I think this guy. Oh, not yet, babe. You want some more brownies? No. That didn't mean to keep it found out of spacey, didn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, outer space type music. But anyway, that was from the dark side of the moon. They never really could. Uh, Would that creep you out? Pin well, fuck yeah, you're on the dark side of the moon. I mean, and now you got this music coming. Across Sorry, this is a family show, I know. Now you got this music coming across the radio waves, and just, and nobody knows where it's coming from. Well, I'd be so nervous. Then, did you see the? But before we get back to your other one, just one little deal. Did uh, 
you know the the guys that were the 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 woman and man that got sent to space on the Boeing craft that yep. got and they stuck them to ISS. Be there till February, right? That craft came down and landed safely yesterday, but they're like a oh, shit. I wish I'd have went in and got on that one. Should have just should have just jumped on it. All right, what's your did you know? No, okay, so you're done. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I know you are a New England blue blunder, blue New England blue blooder. You like to think that you are <laughs> favorite place, favorite place to go. Have you ever heard the story of Samuel Whitmore? Yes, you have. Miss Whitmore's son, yes. The oldest. Everybody knows it. The oldest, bravest, and maybe the craziest American revolutionary. So Samuel Whitmore. I actually do not know who this guy is. I was kidding with you. Samuel Whitmore was born in July of 1696. He fought in the French and Indian War um, and then later came back to um, came back to Cambridge. They elected him. Let's see. He was that's the French and Indian War. Let's see. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Okay. The town of Cambridge uh, elected him to a committee in 1768 after the repeal of the Stamp Act. The committee instructed the town's representatives to the general court on how to vote. The same year, Cambridge elected him as a delegate to the Massachusetts Con uh, Committee of Convention, which objected to Parliament's uh, revenue acts and the quartering of troops in Boston. In uh, 1772, the people of Cambridge elected 76-year-old Samuel Whitmore to the town's Committee of Correspondence. The committee uh, stridently objected to the Tea Act and cautioned, if we cease to assert our rights, we shall dwindle into supineness, and the chains of slavery shall be fast riveted upon us. So, fast forward a couple more years. Uh, after the Battle of the Lexington of Concord, news traveled fast throughout the countryside that hundreds of militiamen from nearby towns came to harass the British as they retreated to Boston. Samuel Whitmore left his fields, gathered his weapons, positioned himself behind a stone wall. At the age of 78 years old, when the British walked by, Samuel Whitmore opened fire on him. He killed three people with his muskets. He had a musket and two uh, pistols. <clears throat> when he ran out of shots, he pulled out a sword that he got in the French and Indian War and attacked untold amounts of British soldiers. They shot him in the face. They bayoneted him six times, and they clubbed, mm, and, they clu and they clubbed him with the with the butts of their guns. They bayoneted him six times. Six times. Six times. An hour later, whenever other people from the the American side of the fight found him, he was reloading his gun. Wow. He lived eighteen more years. In, Tough dude. In, uh, at 78 years old, he died at the age of 96. <clears throat> Massachusetts legislature declared him the official state hero in 2005, though the Senate got his age and date wrongs in the proclamation. So that is Samuel Whitmore. He said, you're never too old to be out of the fight. True patriot. Yep. Okay, my last one. Have you? Did you ever watch All Dogs Go to Heaven? No, and I won't watch it. You never did. Okay. I don't like any show that the animal dies in. So it's got Burt Reynolds in it. He's the voice of Charlie. It's been a long time since I've seen it. There was a young star. She was the voice of the little girl. Her name was Judith Barcy. Have you ever heard of her? Mm -mm. Her dad killed her. That's why I hadn't heard of her. Her dad killed her. I think she was six or seven years old whenever oh. her dad uh, killed her. So all of her parts were done. It was all recorded and in the can. Burt Reynolds had one last part to do, and it was a part where Charlie knew he was going to die, and he was telling uh, the little girl Judith that he was not going to be. Oh, that's going to be. He a was tough not going to be around. So Judith was already dead at the time. Mm. Burt called for a closed session recording. It's only going to be me and the producer and the sound guy. There's going to be three people in there. Took him sixty three takes to get through. The end scene where he, because, you know, he's hearing dead mm. Judith in his in his earbuds. So here's the here's the audio of Burt Reynolds in the final cut of All Dogs Go to Heaven. That took 63 takes to get through. Sure. Sure you will, kid. Oh, I went too far. You know, go See you again? Mm. Now you, you go to sleep. Huh? Charlie? 
Will I ever see you again? Sure. Sure you will, kid. You know, goodbyes aren't forever. Then, goodbye, Charlie. I love you. Yeah. I love you, too. 63 takes for Mr. Burt would, Reynolds. I wish you wouldn't have done that one. That's hurting me. Mm, little girl. Mm. So anyway, those mm, are your mm. those are your did you knows. Well, way to go, Andy. <laughs> Don't got me choked up today. <laughs> it's horrible. Gosh, we got, almighty. Boy, it had been hard on Burt Reynolds. Mm -hmm. mm. We could ask uh, Matt Reagan about that. Maybe he, maybe he knew. Maybe he flew Burt to the studio that day. Burt kicked him out. When was that? That was towards the end. He may have been Burt's pilot. 89. Then. No, he wasn't fine for him then. So that's anyway, tough, that's a tough boy. That hurt me too. That little girl. Oh, those are the, did you know, Samuel Whitmore, all dogs go to heaven, aliens. Mm. What else? Mackinac mm. Island bridge. Mackinac. Thank y'all so much. For this. Just God bless you. Make sure you vote, 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 and get your friends to vote. Peace out. Bye. Love you. Bye. Check out Mallard Bay. If you're booking a hunt or you need to sell a hunt, they can help you out either way. 